Imaginary interfaces are completely non-visual spatial interfaces. The central component is a small wearable device, here a chest-worn camera, which senses the location of a user's hands. Users interact by pointing with one hand to a location on the invisible plane established by the other hand. Users build up a mental model of the invisible space by simply observing their own hands. This way, imaginary interfaces bring pointing to extremely small mobile devices. We envision imaginary interfaces to be used to construct drawings and to interact with user interfaces in a mobile setting. Here are a few examples. First, by sketching on an imaginary interaction plane, users can supply a stream of spatial information to enhance a phone conversation. Here, a user is discussing his stock portfolio with his broker. He draws a price curve and then circles a portion to highlight his point. Even though he can never see the stock curve, it persists in his visual short-term memory, allowing him to refer back to specific locations and annotate them. Similarly, this user is giving driving directions to a friend over the phone. He describes spatial relationships with gestures, just as we do face-to-face. -face. Alternatively, users can create personalized user interfaces by simply drawing them. Here the user knows the location of a button because he drew it himself. Or here, a user has learned a grid of functions based on a coordinate system formed by the length of his thumb and index finger. He adjusts the volume of his audio device by manipulating the slider located at position two thumbs and one finger. In the accompanying paper, we examine the principles behind these scenarios. We investigate the question, to what extent can users interact spatially with a user interface that exists only in their imagination? Using a motion capture system, we track the participants of the experiments and their hands in three-dimensional space. For the first experiment, participants entered simple drawings. Unlike earlier work on eyes-free interaction, participants were able to connect relative position features, such as with a circle aligning the start and end of a stroke. For our second experiment, we examined the use of imaginary interfaces while moving. Participants drew a simple glyph, turned around, and acquired a randomly selected corner of that glyph. We found that using the left hand as a reference helped users maintain spatial relationships. In our third and final experiment, participants selected a location based on a textual description of a coordinate pair. Here, a participant is selecting location 1-2, meaning one thumb to the right and two index fingers up. We experimentally determined the minimum imaginary button sizes for a grid of 4x4 four four locations. Together, these user studies show that imaginary interfaces can readily exploit users' visual short-term memory to replace the feedback normally necessary for spatial interaction. In closing, screenless mobile devices have the potential to give users vastly increased mobility, yet at the expense of functionality. Imaginary interfaces is one approach to bringing some of that lost functionality back by providing support for spatial interaction, such as pointing and drawing.